Well, hello and welcome to this From the Rector study on this Trinity Sunday. I do hope that you're well. Uh, let's pray. Almighty God, your ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love, that all who hear your word may be drawn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, well, we're reminded of how um, Isaiah described his vision of God when he saw him. He, he used these words. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew, and one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, your sin is atoned for. It's a wonderful reminder, isn't it, of how glorious the God is whom we, we serve, the, the God to, that, that we come to, to hear from, the God that we come to pray to, that he is king of the whole world, uh, that, that he's the one that, well, the angels, they're, they're veiling their faces. They, he's so glorious, they can't even look at him. He's the God that when we encounter him, when we realise that he is holy and that we are not, and he's the one who, when we meet him, we discover his grace in covering our sins and drawing us into relationship with him and sending us out on mission for him. Well, that's all picked up with our first hymn. It's it's a hymn that, that well, I, I think, I'm pretty sure that I'd be breaking some sort of rule if, if on Trinity Sunday uh, we didn't sing this. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
our Gospel reading that is set for today is, uh, is Matthew 28. Um, it's the Great Commission, and that's read for us uh, by Anna Miller. The reading is taken from Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20, the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Well, today is, of course, Trinity Sunday. It's a day when um, very often our, our, we get ready to, to have our, our minds confused and, uh, and because we, we feel that the Trinity is there to just baffle us. And very often we feel that it's of no use and it makes no real difference. And it's got nothing to do with the rest of our Christian lives and certainly nothing to do um, with us uh, sharing the gospel with others so that they can come in relationship into relationship with God. The truth is, of course, that nothing could be further from the truth. And, and our gospel reading makes that clear for us. Uh, it, it's set for today because it's one of those passages where Jesus uh, explicitly uses that language of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Most often in the Bible that that structure of Father, Son and Spirit is implicit, it's under the surface um, and then just in some cases it, the, the structure of Father, Son and Spirit breaks the surface uh, and this is one of those. And it's such a key moment because it's it's where Jesus is giving the instructions to his disciples for what they're to be doing, what we're to be doing, that is, in the period between when he goes up to heaven, when, when he ascends to, to the right hand of his father, where he is right now, where he's ruling over everything, until he comes back and everything is restored and the living and the dead are judged. What is it that we're to be doing in that period of time? Well, Jesus is really clear, isn't it? Isn't he? He says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. What's our job? It is to make disciples of people. That we can, to go in order that we can do it, to do it, and we're to do it by baptising and teaching. And baptising how? baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Names are really important, aren't they? Identities really matter. Uh, you, you, you'll have noticed this if, if you've ever got someone's identity wrong. Uh, perhaps if you've described them as, as, as something and, and they're actually, no, that's not how I ident identify, you know. If you've ever made the mistake of confusing a, a Kentish man with a man of Kent, and that, that can get you into all sorts of trouble, can't it? You know. or, or, or if you've ever mistakenly called a Canadian an American, and uh, that's not who I am. Identities really matter. And as Jesus sends us out on mission, he, he says that what we're to do to bring people into God's family, boy, it involves baptising them. And baptising them into God's name so that the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit becomes their identity, becomes our identity. Becomes the, the badge by which we know, oh yes, I'm, I'm the, the family of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Why does that matter? Well, the Trinity matters to the whole family of salvation because it just wouldn't work without that. Because as people are brought into God's family, how does that happen? Well, it happens by the Spirit opening our eyes so that we can, so that we can see who God is. 
Uh, the Spirit sort of takes away hearts that just really don't care about God and enables us to, to perceive something of his glory and his beauty, a bit like Isaiah did in that vision. The Spirit does that as, as someone shares the, the, the word, as someone shares the gospel. The Spirit draws us into that relationship so that we encounter Jesus, the Jesus who laid down his life for us, so that we can bring us to the Father. And people sometimes, um, when they struggle with the, the idea of the Trinity, well, they, they sometimes want us to, to say, oh, well, isn't that just sort of, you know, three badges for, for the same person? Um, and one answer you can give to that is, well, no. Um, and there's a, there's a technical name for that, that heresy, and, and, and it's wrong for all sorts of reasons. But one of the key reasons is that if that's all it is, that, and God is just sort of play-acting as those different people, then, well, this isn't really the God, the, the name that Jesus t wants us to baptise people in isn't really God's identity. That isn't really who God is. We don't really know who God is. You know, that, that, that there are these masks that God let, wears, and then behind that there's the real God that we never encounter. But more than that, it means that the whole of our salvation does not work. Because salvation is so much richer than we so often think. So often we just boil it down to, um, I get forgiven for my sins, I I've got eternal fire insurance so that after my death, you know, I don't go to the hot place, instead of I go to the heavenly place. Now, that's not wrong, but it's so much more than that. Because the point, the reason that my sins get forgiven and the reason that that matters is, is so that I can have a relationship with God. And the relationship that I have with God, that Jesus brings me through the gospel, is the relationship that he has. That the Spirit makes me one with Jesus so that I know him, God as my Father in the same way as Jesus does. That is, he draws me into the relationship of the Trinity. Because at the end of the day, the Trinity isn't about weird maths. At the end of the day, the Trinity isn't about baffling doctrinal issues. Oh, there is incredible richness in that, which is gloriously true. It's wonderful, isn't it, that God is richer and greater than we can comprehend. If God was small enough to fit inside my brain, that would be a very small God. But at the end of the day, what the Trinity is about is about the God that we know and the God who draws us into relationship with him so that as we're sent out, the Spirit makes us one with the Son so that we know God as Father. That's the whole pattern of our Christian experience, isn't it? That, the, that we see Jesus. Uh, we see what he does for us on the cross and that through that we discover the love of God. And we enter into that relationship with God as, as Father. That's why he teaches us to pray the way that he does. Our Father who art in heaven. It's all rooted and all depends on the truth of God as Trinity. But it's more. Uh, because when Jesus sends us out in mission on, on that, in that passage there, uh, he, he says... Well, he starts it off with a statement about himself and he ends with a statement about himself. Both of which completely depend upon the truth of the Trinity. So he starts off, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me, therefore go. And at the end he promises, behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. All authority in heaven on earth has been given to me, he says. If Jesus has all authority in heaven and earth, then he has the authority of God himself. Uh, that is, that all the authority that God has over his creation, which is absolute, the authority that means that he's got the right to tell us what to do, the authority that means that everyone owes him worship and that no one has the right not to worship him, 
uh, the authority that means that no powers of evil ultimately can stand against him. Jesus wants us to know that he has that authority. And that is true because he is God the Son. And he says, all authority has been given to me because he shares in his father's authority. There is no rivalry here. So that when we come to Jesus, we know, oh, well, Jesus, yes, he really does have all authority. That, that, that the Jesus we come to is the one who is able to save us to the uttermost. The Jesus we come to is the one that we can trust completely because he is one with the Father and because he shares in his Father's authority. And that promise at the end, uh, well, he says, behold, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. How does that work? Well, that works, again, because of the nature of God as Trinity. That I'm... Jesus, who has ascended to the Father's side in his human nature, is in heaven. Of course, in his divine nature, he is in all places always, and that is always true. But his personal presence with us as his people, his personal presence with us as his people whom he sends out to the nations, that is by the Spirit who comes and dwells in us. That because he is one with the Spirit, therefore the Spirit brings Jesus' own presence into our lives. So that if you're a Christian, that, me that means that you've got the Holy Spirit living in you. That means that you are never alone. And the Spirit, as Jesus promises, well, he brings Jesus' presence. In fact, he brings the Father's presence as well. You see, the Trinity really matters. It matters for our whole Christian experience. It means that we know that God is with us, that Jesus is with us. And lastly, well, that comfort is not just meant to make us feel warm and cosy, like sitting in a good armchair with a nice cup of tea. Now, the comfort that the doctrine of the Trinity brings us, meaning that we know that the personal presence of Jesus with us, meaning that we know that Jesus has the authority of God the Father, meaning that, that as we by, and, and others are drawn into that relationship with God, marked by baptism, relationship with God who is Father, Son and Spirit, well, that is meant to equip and drive us out to all peoples everywhere. All authority in heaven and earth, says Jesus, is given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. I wonder when we had the reading just now, did you notice the, uh, the very helpfully positioned map of the world on the, on the wall by Anna? I thought that was a great touch. Because that's, that's what it's all about. It's about sending us as God's people to all nations so that all nations may be drawn into that relationship with God through Jesus. Uh, that, that word uh, for nations there, it doesn't, it's not so much talking about political realities as we might often use in sort of the idea of the nation state. It's all peoples, culture groups, ethnicities. I mean, our word ethnicity comes from the Greek word used here, ethne. Um, and what that means is that there, if there is any group anywhere that has yet to hear the wonderful news about Jesus as the Son of God who draws us to know God his Father in the power of the Spirit, what are you and I doing about that? It means that if there's any group anywhere that is being excluded from knowing God as Father through the Son in the power of the Spirit, what are you and I doing about that? Even more, if there are individuals in our lives 
who've yet to hear the message of Jesus so that they can know God as Father in the power of the Spirit. What are you and I doing about that? We've been encouraged, haven't we, to be praying by name for five individuals to come to know God as Father in the power of the Spirit through the Son. I do hope you're keeping on praying for your five individuals every day and asking that God will give you opportunities to speak because that's why Jesus sent us so that people would come into the family marked by the Trinity people would come into the relationship defined by the Trinity knowing the presence of God promised by the Trinity let's pray Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, well, because for the last 1500 years, the classic way that Christians have confessed and stated our faith in the Trinity, in the God who is Trinity, uh, has been in the words of the Nicene Creed. Uh, it's words that formulated to help define and safeguard the truth that the Bible reveals to us uh, so that we can pass that on and others can draw and can come to share in it. Uh, Last week um, I shared with you a, a, a video of the, the Nicene Creed with uh, Anglicans from every continent in the world um, and, and all sorts of, of countries and, and backgrounds in it. Um, but uh, such a wonderful reaction to that. So I'm going to share the same uh, video again. Um, this is the Nicene Creed. <laughs> The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, only begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one being with the Father. Through Him, all this we are made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit. And the Virgin Mary. He was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and appointed spirit. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism. For the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. And the life of the world to come. Amen. 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 Amen.
our prayers this morning are going to be uh, led for us by um, Kay from our St Margaret's Church family. Let's pray. Hello everyone. Let us ask the Father, Son and Holy Spirit to be with us as we come together in prayer on this Trinity Sunday. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, your Spirit enables us to know the wonderful love of God our Father. It enables us to bear witness to the amazing gift of Christ Jesus, and it helps us draw people into the greatness of your family here on earth. As we witness more and more violence resulting from racial, racial discrimination and religious persecution across the world, hear us now as we pray for reconciliation and peace amongst all people, regardless of creed or colour. We think especially at this time of the people of America and Syria. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, now that lockdown restrictions are easing, we pray for common sense and respect for all people to help form our own decisions and those of others so that we do not experience a second spike of COVID-19 infections. We pray for all those still affected by the virus and for continued strength and resilience for all key workers. We also pray for wisdom and knowledge for those in authority making daily decisions about the way forward and for those seeking a cure. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, on this Trinity Sunday, as we continue to pray for our own personal five a day, we ask for your Holy Spirit to open our mouths to tell of your mercy, our eyes to see your majesty, our ears to hear your word, our hands to do your work and our hearts to know your amazing love. As you commanded the disciples, help us to teach others of your grace and glory and to know that you are with us always to the end of the age. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now the collect for this Sunday. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 